Fargo, North Dakota, home to the biggest wrestling tournament in the history of the world. With over 7,000 pre-registrations this year, no wrestling tournament even comes close to its magnitude. I've actually never been to Fargo, but I've heard stories. It's packed, it's sweaty, it's in the middle of nowhere, but most of all, it's long. I mean, this tournament is just non-stop action for like six days straight. And then I found out that I had to go. Was I scared of what I was about to walk into? Yes, but that's why I'm making this series, so no one ever has to wonder what Fargo is actually like based off stories again. I'm going to be exploring this tournament and showing you just what it looks like through the eyes of a newcomer. Hopefully by the end of this, we'll be able to bust any Fargo myths and get to the bottom of what makes this tournament so truly special that thousands of people are willing to travel all across the country to the same tournament every year. Day three is already off to a great start because I actually got an Uber. I scheduled it a day in advance so I wouldn't have to hitchhike with another family today. While it was awesome getting to know new people yesterday, it was really nice not having to nervously approach anyone and ask for a ride this morning. So pro tip, if you need an Uber in Fargo, schedule it in advance. I think today is about to be the most interesting day yet because today we're gonna find the infamous Fargo Black Markets. As someone who had never been to Fargo, I've heard legends of these markets for a long time. Legends that said you could get crazy shoes that don't exist anymore like Rulons, OG Inflicts, John Smith's legends that expert traders could walk in with a pair of socks and leave with $250 shoes. Safe to say I was enticed. Are the things my generation loved still popular? So I began searching, looking for any hint of where I could find these markets. After a while of finding nothing, I began to get discouraged, but then I realized it. Security. Of course they wouldn't set up here. Security would stop them dead in their tracks. I realized I might not be able to find this on my own, so I enlisted some help. Hey, excuse me, man. Are you busy? No, I'm not. All right, listen. I heard that there's a Fargo black market. Is that true? Keep it on the low key. Go straight and take it right outside the doors. Hey, keep it quiet though. Thank you. He told me where I could find the market, which was also a huge confidence boost because it means I don't look like a narc. As I headed toward the area he directed me, my imagination started to run wild. Was there a secret entrance? Would I need to know a password? Had I only just begun this journey? I got outside and... Oh, they're literally just right there. More of a market than a black market, if you ask me, but I was excited nonetheless. As I filmed the layout, some kids immediately demanded attention, so I gave it to them. You wanna, you wanna talk? What's going on right now? So, kids are selling stuff. Like, I got this box, but it's a mystery box. What's up? Five bucks for this one. Five bucks? Five bucks. Fargo. Gotta go. Marketing and dealing. Marketing and dealing? That's what's most valuable? I found that five bucks under a vending machine. Anything? And I just gotta single it. Now watch this. I'm gonna go trade this for a pair of shoes. Can I follow you while you do that? Yeah. What's I'm your name? Tanner Catrivel. Where are you from? Buffalo, New York. I like the Michigan sweatshirt. I used to wrestle there. Really? Yeah. I swear. They always told me my Michigan degree would be amazing for networking, but I never imagined it would be useful at the Fargo Black Markets. Wait, you know Cameron Amin? Yeah, I know Cameron Wait. Amin. That's my dog. It's your dog? Is he going to be watching this? This? Maybe, yeah, because I'm making it. What's up, Cam? <laughs> the feel with the power for them, shark slides. You just took those off your feet, literally like five minutes ago. It's going on flow. This is going on flow. Hi, Mom. <laughs> And the mystery and box. The mystery box. What's in the mystery box? I'll just show the camera. 500. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Have you ever like made a big trade at one of these? 200 bucks. 200 bucks for what? I bought two singlets, a pair of shoes, and a pair of flip flops. Wait, you bought them with 200 dollars? Or... Yeah, I bought them. Oh, so you didn't make 200 dollars? No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought you said you made 200 dollars. No. So I pretty much got these for five bucks. Give me the rundown. What'd you start with and what'd you end up with? I started up five bucks. I traded that for a singlet, and then I traded the singlet in a land yard for these Kyle Dakes. Kyle, okay. Kyle Dake. It looks like a KS on the shoe, so I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> Kyle Snyder. That's just a logo. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. In minutes, this kid took $5 he found under a vending machine and turned it into an entire pair of shoes. After shadowing Tanner for a bit, I decided I would ask some of the vendors questions about their Fargo black market experiences. I wanted to get to the bottom of what held the most value, and I wanted to find out if any of these kids had made giant trades in the past. Dude, what are you doing here right now? Uh, train singlets in the Fargo black market. Everyone in Illinois has always told me that this place is called the black market because you can basically buy, sell, trade anything you want. Would you rather sell stuff or would you rather trade it? From Definitely you? rather trade. Have you done this before? Or? No, no, this is my first time. People go crazy for Team Ohio gear too. That's where yeah. we're from. So. Really? I was going to ask you guys, what's the most popular gear you think? They really like our bags. We got, we got new bags. Is there anyone here who's like a veteran at trading that I should talk to? He's on the tote. 
on that trip right there. This kid right here? Yeah, he's a veteran trader. He's, he's good at that stuff. He's good? I should go talk to him? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I'm Tyler. What's your name? Lock. Lock, is it okay if I film you? Yeah. Okay. They told me you're a veteran trader over here. Yeah, I'm a veteran. I've been doing this for a couple of years now. What's yeah, your okay. biggest sale you've ever made? I probably sold a pair of OG Influx for 230 Wow. What's the key to, to selling gear at key? Fargo? I don't know. Have fun. Have fun? Have fun. What's the best thing you came away from this with? Probably this week. I got a pair of combat speeds. They're a little beat, but I like them. They're yeah. comfortable. What do you think the most valuable thing that you have right now is? Probably these freaks. I was pretty disappointed to find out that all the shoes that are rare now were just regular shoes when I was in high school. Am I old? What is like the most valuable state gear here? Everyone likes them. What do you think you could trade a Minnesota single for? You could probably trade for anything, honestly. Everyone wants them. What was your name? Sito. Sito? Where are you from? Minnesota. Man, they were saying that the Minnesota gear is worth the most. You think that's true? Yo, the singlets? Oh, yes, sir. They're the most fire in the country. Would you rather sell for money or would you rather trade for gear? Probably trade. Yeah? Just, just to get a bigger collection. To my surprise, most of these kids were not in it for the money. They just wanted to expand their collection. So I decided I would put it to the test. I packed Flow Wrestling socks on this trip. These are socks you can only get if you work at Flow Wrestling or if you compete in one of our events. Were the socks a little bit dirty because I've been wearing them for six months? Perhaps. Will that make them more valuable? That's yet to be seen. So I decided I would give them to a kid and see if he could trade up to a singlet or a pair of shoes with them. So I started asking around to see if I could find someone who was really good at trading. Hey ma'am, what's your name? Uh, Robert. Hey Robert, I heard you're really good at trading. Is that true? <laughs> uh, I'm all right. I have a pair of flow socks. You can't get them unless you wrestle in a flow event, like who's number one, that kind right. of stuff, right? I want to see if I can trade up to anything valuable from those. You think you can do it? We can find out. So these are what they look like? Do you think they're valuable? Do they look cool? They're pretty cool, actually, yeah. I think the story behind them are gonna be what's gonna sell them, so. These are my personal socks. Don't do me wrong, you we'll know see, what I'm we'll saying? See what you gotta get, get something cool out we'll of this. We'll see what we can get you. Like, you I was trusting Robert with my life. And by life, I mean socks that I consider to be pretty cool. I was nervous. Would he remember to do the sales pitch? Would he emphasize just how rare these socks are? I got some uh, flow wrestling socks here. I don't know if you guys are interested. I'm trying to trade up, see what we can get eventually. These are like only worn by like the wrestlers at their events and stuff. I'd put in that singlet and the black hat. And the black hat? Yeah. We'll see what we can do. A hat and a really small singlet? Robert, if you're seeing this, man, you kind of flopped that. I thought you were gonna sell those way harder. I was starting to get nervous. Did I trust the wrong person? But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe flow socks just don't command as much interest as I thought they might. I was excited to see if Robert could come back from this. Extra small, man, come on. And the hat. What's your cheapest singlet, man? We traded for one singlet, then another singlet. Then we traded that for a pretty cool Dia de los Muertos singlet. I honestly would have been cool stopping there. That singlet was pretty sweet. Not bad. Still small though, so I don't know if he can get something bigger. It's gonna be a little bit hard. We could try a couple more times. But then, just when I was a little bit disappointed because we didn't get all the way up to shoes, Robert made a pretty sweet trade. So we started off with a pair of flow socks. We ended with the flow singlet. I don't think we did too bad. The OG Flow Wrestling singlet. This has got to be pretty rare. I mean, Flow changed their logo years ago. It had the OG Flow green with the wave. For those of you who don't know, Flow did a rebrand a few years ago. So it's actually impossible to get anything like this anymore. From Flow socks to Flow singlet, I thought that was kind of cool how we came full circle. You can't even get these ones anymore, man. So pretty neat. It wasn't a pair of shoes like I wanted, but Robert definitely redeemed himself in my eyes. And with that brings an end to our Fargo culture series. Flo has never really done this style of content before, so I appreciate you letting me experiment. I had a really fun time making these, so if you enjoyed them, please let us know. Be vocal in those comments so my bosses see them and they'll let me make more. Overall, Fargo is pretty cool. I hope these videos did a good job portraying what it's like to be here so no one ever has to wonder like I did again.